Hey, what's up, everyone? It is Julian here, and I wanted to do a very impromptu episode. And this is lessons from the ER. So interesting story. It's interesting because I'm okay. But um, a few nights ago, I um, ended up at the ER, and it came from apparently three Brazilian nuts. So apparently I have an allergy to Brazilian nuts, right? So I'm eating these Brazilian nuts and Brazilian nuts is typically a food that I recommend people eat. It's very healthy, high in selenium. You can get nearly a daily's worth of intake from a couple of nuts, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But regardless, it's very healthy food for most people. Not for me, apparently. So I eat these Brazilian nuts, right? And I start to notice that my mouth is very dry, really dry. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm dehydrated. So I go down some water. Water does nothing. And my throat is getting even more dry. Now it's starting to burn a little bit. And I start to feel like a rash or something in my mouth. And it's like, this is, this is kind of weird. Never had this before, but you know, maybe it's the nuts are just really dry. And the next thing, as I go back to the bathroom, I go look to see if something's wrong. Mouth's a little red, but I, I don't think nothing over it. And then maybe a few more minutes, maybe two or three more minutes, I start to get a little hot. And I go look at myself again. I'm like, well, I look a little more reddish. My skin tone is changing a little bit. Lips look a little different. So I start to question now. It's like, okay, something's going on, but maybe I'm just in my head. Next thing happens again. And it starts to get a little more difficult to swallow. And I'm like, man, my throat's feeling really tight now. <laughs> okay. And then this is when I'm like, okay, something's going on here. So I get in a car. I'm, I wasn't at home right now. Anyway, I was out. And I just think about going home to maybe relax and it, it will, um, it'll, it'll go away. It'll go away. And then my chest gets tight and everything. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I think I, mean, I, this is when I finally confirmed to myself that, okay, Julian, you're having a, some type of reaction here from three measly Brazilian nuts. And so I, I go to the ER. I don't think must nothing of it that much still. I still don't think it's that serious of a thing. So I'm joking with the, with the guy in there and I tell him what's going on and they skip all the paperwork and rush me to the back and everything do the blood work and all that good stuff. And I'm joking with the guy. And I was like, you know, honestly, if I'm being truthful, I did not, I was actually just gonna go home and think about just sleeping this off, maybe taking a little Benadryl. And that's when he let me know that these kind of things happen a lot with people, these allergic reactions, and they can actually be fatal. And I was like, wow. Now, you know these things, but when you actually hear it, you're like, wow. So it's actually good. I guess I did show up because this was apparently gonna get worse. So all is well, you know, they drugged me a little bit. I had to be under observation for a few hours, stuck a few needles in me or different things. And you know, all is well, but this got me thinking while I was there because my mind's always racing and I've been resting a little bit for a few days. It got me thinking, there's always lessons in this. Everything, everything that we go through in life, every day that we live, whether it's an ideal situation or a non-ideal situation, expected situation or a non-expected situation, there's always lessons that we can take from it. So I thought, what are some lessons that I've taken from this? So there's two lessons that I wanna share with you as it relates to optimal health, optimal performance and longevity wise. And in tune, just living a superhuman life and, and living as the best version of ourselves. So the first one is little things can turn into big things. Now, this seems very obvious, right? But think about this. Some of the most basic concepts that we have, some of the basic fundamental lessons are so easy that we overlook them. And so this is a case point, an example, a little crack in the dam that's left unaddressed over time will most definitely burst into something that cannot be controlled and you're gonna have a lot of damage. The same thing when it comes to health. Every holiday season, most people gain a couple pounds, two, three pounds, four or five pounds, maybe some seven or eight pounds. And over the course of the next few months, they'll lose a few of those pounds. 
they're not going to lose all seven or eight of those pounds. They'll lose maybe three to four. So there's four pounds left over. But four pounds doesn't make a huge difference. Four pounds is not going to require you to change your pants, the waist size. You're not going to really notice it. You look in the mirror, you're not going to notice it. And if you do notice it, maybe you'll say it's water weight. So you, you'll just brush it aside, right? What about when the next year comes? The same thing happens. You had four pounds from last year. You got a few more this year. A few more the next year. A few more the next year. A few more the next year. And the next thing is you are 10, 15, 20 pounds overweight. And you're like, how the hell did this happen? Small things turn into big things. That's how it always happens. You're not going to get overweight overnight. You're not going to get out of shape overnight. But if you stop doing the little things on a daily basis, that's when these big things happen. So don't overlook the small things. Another example is blood work. You're fasting insulin, fasting glucose, A1C. It's a few points off, but it's not so big of a deal that it causes concern. Cholesterol can be up. Various different biomarkers. But they're not so big that you don't notice it. So you keep just doing the same thing. And it's not until this big moment happens that you notice, oh crap, there's something I need to change here. And this is all part of being proactive instead of reactive. We live in a society now. Well, I should say now. It's been like this for a while when it comes to health that we're much more reactive. We wait for something to happen. We wait for something cataclysmic to happen before we take action on it. But really, when that check engine light comes on in the car, that's when we should take action, not when the motor is completely destroyed. Then we take action. It's a little too late then. We think about relationships, and in relationships, one little nagging thing that about our wife, husband, parent, friend, you name it, we overlook it. There's issues that need to be settled. We overlook it. And over time, that resentment continues to build up until you have this moment where you just blow up on each other. And a lot of people are typically affected then because you have a broken relationship, you have divorces, you have all sorts of things. And a lot of people are affected and it gets messy. In business, same thing. Not attending to things like customer service, answering emails in a timely fashion. Any sorts of things in business, supply issues, you name it. You don't notice these little things, you overlook them. And then over time, you lose that big contract and you lose a significant portion of your revenue. Don't overlook small things because they can become big things in every single facet of life. Now, the second thing that got me thinking was when the guy was like, yeah, this thing kills people. And I'm like, wow, something like this kills people. And I intuitively know this, but just actually think about it. And I guess it was the same hospital that my father was at as well. So you always have these things come back in your head and they circulate. And this got me thinking, hmm, if this was it, wow, you're going to be taken out by some Brazilian nuts. But on a more serious note, it got me thinking, what are we actually afraid of in this world? Because there's only one thing that we should really be afraid of. It's not what people think of us. It's not criticism. It's not failing. The thing that we should be afraid of, the only thing that we should be afraid of, fearful of, is time. Now, time is something that we cannot get back. Time is non-renewable. It's non-renewable. Now, I'm into superheroes a little bit. Unfortunately, I don't think anyone has the power to time travel back or be the Flash and go back in time. So time's going to keep marching on whether we're being productive with it or not. Whether we want it to or not, time keeps moving on. It has no emotion. It doesn't care about our feelings. Now, a lot of times people ask me, and this was years ago, Julian, did you have any fear about leaving medical school and leaving that for you know, what you're doing now in writing and you had no substantial proof that you could even do this thing? And the answer, well, okay, the answer was I was a little afraid, but really I wasn't because I knew I could always go back to that. But I knew in this moment, this opportunity was once in a lifetime. 
because we can fail in business. It's not pleasant, but it happens. We can go bankrupt. Not pleasant, but it happens to many people. And we've seen people in both scenarios get themselves out of the hole and become very successful. We've seen people do it multiple times. We've also seen people who have had their heart broken and they cannot recover. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, time keeps marching on and time heals a lot of wounds. But so what are you really afraid of? So I hope this inspires you, helps snaps you out. Because a lot of times there's things that are limiting us that should be limiting us. You should read the Invisible Elephant story. It's a very good story about why the elephant couldn't escape, something like that. And he thought he had a little rope around him. And there's a much more in that story, but it's a very good story to go along with this. But really, the only thing we should be afraid of is time. Time is fleeting. We can recover from the business. We can recover from the health mishaps. We can recover being overweight and get back to where we used to be. We can recover from nearly everything, every obstacle in life. And so if we can recover from every obstacle in life, what does that make every obstacle? It makes those obstacles an illusion. You see, there's really no such thing as obstacles. There's only illusions. So keep that in mind that this obstacle, this blocking thing that I'm talking about right now, it's really an illusion in my mind that can easily be overcame. But time is fleeting. So the two lessons from this ordeal that I was thinking about was don't overlook small things because they become large things that are typically not ideal for us. And the second thing is the only thing to be afraid of, if you're going to be afraid of anything, is time. Time is fleeting. Everything else you can recover from. So if you're on the fence about your business, changing careers, changing jobs, hell, shooting your shot with that crush you got, whatever it is, don't be afraid of that. You can recover from all those things, but you cannot recover from time. Time fleeting. So make the most of it. So stay awesome, be limitless, and as always, go be superhuman. Peace.